This activity teaches students about RF, or radio frequency wireless signal transmission. In the activity, students will modify their transmitter and receiver circuits from the last activity in order to send the alarm signal wirelessly. They will then explore how these systems work by looking at ways of extending the range of their wireless signal transmissions. For this activity, each group of students should be provided with the following. An RF transmitter chip, an RF receiver chip, seven two-inch jumper wires, and the wired communication system the students built in the previous activity. In order to prepare for this activity, please remove the two long wires connecting the transmitter to the receiver. The RF transmitter and receiver chips will replace these wires. Then, you must alter the transmitter by adding the RF transmitter chip. The signal that the encoder chip outputs is then connected to the RF transmitter. The RF transmitter then uses power from the power rail connections to convert that electric signal into an RF signal. Next, you must alter the receiver by adding the RF receiver chip and the appropriate wires to the circuit. The RF receiver chip converts the RF signal into an electric signal. The electric signal is connected to the input on the decoder chip. In order to do this conversion, the RF receiver chip uses power from the power rails. Finally, we can demonstrate the results, but first, we must connect the two battery packs to the receiver and the transmitter breadboards. It is possible that one or both of the LEDs will flash rather than shine constantly. This is normal. We will now demonstrate how far the receiver and the transmitter can be separated without losing connection. The receiver and the transmitter cannot be separated very much without losing connection. Next, attach an antenna to the transmitter breadboard. You can also attach an antenna to the receiver breadboard by inserting the wire into the appropriate pin. Here, we explore how far we can separate the transmitter and the receiver with an antenna attached to the transmitter. After you do so, please record the distance. Sometimes the lights will turn off even when the signal is in range. This is normal. As you can see, you can separate the transmitter and the receiver a lot farther with the antenna than without it. Next, we demonstrate how the receiver can still receive radio signals from the transmitter without the two breadboards being in each other's line of sight. You can see that as I continue backing up through the hallway around the corner, the radio signal is still being received. In concluding this activity, ask students how the circuit they created in this activity differed from the wired transmitter receiver circuit they created in Activity 2. They may note multiple differences, but the main one functionally is that this circuit could be carried around from room to room, so that if the transmitter were attached via door triggers to a lockbox and a door, then the receiver could receive that signal in any room in the house, kitchen, living room, television room, 
and the students can carry it around in their pockets.